In a laboratory setup, flow over notches can be studied using an experimental setup called a hydraulic bench. So this bench consists of an outer casing, then it houses a reservoir of water and a pump. So that pump draws the water up into an experimental channel. So from that experimental channel, water is allowed to flow over a notch and there we take some measurements to verify our theories. The whole experimental setup can be understood using this kind of a 3D demonstration. It is a simplified version of the whole experimental setup. In the actual hydraulic bench, all these things will be hidden inside the casing. Only the top part will be visible. So, as we can see here, there is this reservoir at the bottom, which stores some amount of water. And that water can be drawn by this pump. And this pump supplies the water to this channel above through this outlet. And to diminish the action of waves and turbulence, this kind of a baffle wall or obstacle is provided so that in the experimental section, the waves and turbulences are not there. So the experimental set section is this notch section. Here it is a triangular notch. Instead of this notch, it can be replaced with a rectangular notch like this. Whichever notch plate is used based on requirement, the principle is the same. Behind this notch, there is water and if we open this valve, more water will enter this experimental channel and this water level will rise like this. and water will start to flow over this notch. Above this, there is a provision called point gauge. This is used for measurement of water level and it consists of this kind of a stand and a scale is there, a vertical scale with centimeter and millimeter readings and a needle which can be raised or lowered based on need which is attached with a marker which using which we can note down the readings on the scale. It can be fixed at required location using screws which can be tightened or loosened. Now in this experiment, the main objective is to find out the coefficient of discharge. So it can be either for a rectangular notch or for a triangular notch. In case of rectangular notch, the actual discharge divided by theoretical discharge gives us the coefficient of discharge. And the theoretical discharge can be found out using this formula 2 by 3 b root over 2 g h to the power 3 by 2 and q actual that is actual discharge it has to be measured using the experiment and b is either given or you can measure it directly and h this head h we have to measure similarly for triangular notch as well the coefficient of discharge is given by the, the same ratio and only difference is the formula for theoretical discharge which in this case is 8 by 15 10 theta by 2 root over 2 g h to the power 5 by 2 Similarly, the actual discharge has to be measured. Theta, that is the angle of the notch, will have to be given or we can directly measure it. And again, the head H will have to measure. Now, how do we measure theoretical discharge? So, using the formula, we have to first measure H, then put that in the appropriate formula for rectangular or triangular notch. But how do we find this H then? For measurement of H, 
First we will let the water flow over the notch till the water level drops up to the sill level of the notch and then the flow stops. So in this setup, first we will let water to accumulate in this channel and then flow over this notch and then we will close this valve this valve will be closed and then no more water will enter this channel and whatever water was above this level shown by this corner which is called the sill level of the notch when water level drops up to that level then the discharge stops over the notch so at that point we'll use this point gauge to take a reading the way we take the reading is that we will lower this needle and we'll lower it till it reaches till this point of the needle touches the water surface so at that position we will take the reading of this marker whatever that is on this scale and call it H0 so the tip of the point gauge will touch the water level and the reading will be H0 then we will open the valve and let water enter this channel so that the water level rises and flow starts to take place over the channel and we'll wait for some time so that the flow becomes steady that means whatever amount of water is entering through this inlet is the same amount of water that is being discharged over this notch in that situation the water level in this channel will remain steady otherwise it will either increase or decrease if the both the inflow and outflow rates are not equal so that when we reach that point when the water level remains constant for that we may have to wait for a few seconds so at that point we will again use this point gauge and now we will raise this needle by whatever amount necessary so that again this tip of this needle touches the new raised water level and again we will note down this new reading that new reading will let's call it h1 so we'll let water level rise and water flow over the notch and when the point gauge touches the new water level we'll call that reading h1 so the difference between h1 and h0 is the head acting over the notch that is capital h which we are going to use in the formula for discharge the theoretical discharge so this QTH or theoretical discharge is either this formula or this formula based on whether you are using a rectangular notch or triangular notch. Then comes measurement of actual discharge. So for actual discharge, we will let the water flow over the notch at whatever rate it was flowing. So we will not uh, change anything in the valve. So the previous constant rate of flow, we will try to maintain it and then we'll collect the water in a measuring tank so that measuring tank is in front of this notch so water will flow over this notch and will be collected in this tank or this portion of the channel this portion of the channel is connected to through this outlet pipe with the reservoir that means whatever amount of water is flowing into this channel is immediately discharged into this reservoir so that the same amount of water is circulated and we don't have to provide additional water that is whatever amount of water is being drawn by the pump the same amount of water is again discharged into the reservoir but while taking the measurement what we will do is suddenly we will close this opening 
through which water is discharged using some kind of valve so that valve will be provided here and by closing that valve suddenly we will start collecting water in this measuring tank so when water is rising water level is rising in this tank it is connected to through this tube and through this tube it is connected to a measuring tube vertical glass tube which is fitted with this kind of a scale so this scale will have readings of volume that means when water level rises in this chamber at the same time water level in this tube will also rise because they are both connected and these readings will give us what is the volume collected in that tank so to find out the discharge what we can do is as water level keeps rising at some point in this scale as soon as the water level or the lower meniscus of the low water level in this tube um, crosses as soon as it crosses a certain mark suppose the mark 3 or the 4 mark we'll decide it beforehand so at that point we'll start a stopwatch and as it reaches some other predetermined level suppose it reaches the level 9 at that point we'll stop the stopwatch so whatever time is shown by the stopwatch suppose 10 seconds for example then the 10 second is required to fill up from this 4 suppose liters 4 liter to 9 liters that means 5 liters 9 minus 4 is 5 liters of water is collected in 10 seconds which tells us that the discharge is 5 liters divided by 10 seconds that is 0 0.5 liter per second so that's how we measure the actual discharge after it is done we'll again open this valve so that the tank doesn't overflow and that way we find out the actual discharge so we'll note down the time required to fill up a given volume so that given volume will decide from which mark to which mark we are going to uh, take the readings and we'll note down the time required for water level to rise from a value of r1 to r2 so in the example that we discussed in the previous diagram it is from 4 to 9 so r1 is 4 r2 is 9 and therefore r2 minus r1 that is the volume will be 5 and divided by the time whatever time it took 10 second 15 second so that will give us the discharge and this will be the actual discharge so therefore we'll fill up an observation table while performing the experiment so angle of the notch or width of the notch whether it is a triangular notch or rectangular notch for triangular notch the angle will be given for rectangular notch the width will be given so we'll note these things down and we'll perform this um, we'll fill up this observation table So in this observation table, first we will note down H, H0, then we will note down H1 and then we will note down R1 then R2 and the time. Then we will do the subsequent calculations and find out what are the discharges, actual discharges and the theoretical discharges using the appropriate formulas and then we will simply find out here the ratios of actual discharge to theoretical discharge and after we find out the ratios different ratios uh, the ratios will be different for different sets of observations so finally we can either write down an average coefficient of discharge or we can uh, prepare a graph of head versus the 
coefficient of discharge. Please note that the coefficient of discharge is not, may not be a constant term. Although for a given range of discharge, it can be considered approximately constant, but for the entire range of discharge, suppose from zero to the maximum discharge possible over a notch, it may not be a constant. Because for very low discharges, the viscous effects will be more and therefore the coefficient of discharge will be less because the losses due to friction will be more. However, for higher discharges, that viscous effect becomes negligible and therefore the coefficient of become, uh, discharge becomes fairly constant. So we can provide this kind of a curve or we can suggest one average value. So this is how the manufacturers of a notch will find out the coefficient of discharge and mark it on the notch plate. So you can buy that plate and put it wherever where necessary. Or this kind of experiment can also be performed. Suppose uh, you have to measure the discharge of some continuously flowing fluid and you have prepared a notch and so there you have found out the you have just measured the head and found out the theoretical discharge but actual discharge is uh, not possible to measure suppose at the field so you bring that notch back to the laboratory so in laboratory you prepare a similar kind of setup and find out the coefficient of discharge